Welcome to Unfold Data Science friends. My name is Aman and I'm a data scientist. In this particular video, I'm going to show you how to run dbscan in Python. That is number one. Number two, how dbscan is different from k-means clustering in terms of many applications in Python. Okay, so I'm going to show you that as the part two. And third is how do you choose the optimal number of hyperparameters or optimal value of hyperparameters in dbscan clustering. So we will watch this video in three sections. Okay, so let's start with the first section guys DB scan clustering intuition. Now, first of all, I created a detailed video on how DB scan clustering works. You can see the link right here. If you have not watched, I advise you to watch that video first. Okay. So in that video, I told that there are four or five important things in DB scan clustering. Okay. What are those four or five important things guys core point border point noise point i am reiterating this because i want you to remember this always okay these are different points in dvs can clustering and then comes epsilon which is your parameter value and then comes your minimum number of data points right minimum number of sample or data point whatever you call it so if you understand these things right what i am doing here i am importing db scan from sklearn i am taking matplotlib and then pyplot i am import numpy as np and i am creating this simple data here guys if you can see one two three four four three eight seven some some data points right so let me run this first let me run this so this is how my x looks like okay so this is my x which i have created now by looking at this x guys what do you feel if i give it to a clustering algorithms then how many cluster will be formed so let's see here guys one two three four and four three these three points are close to each other okay hence i am assuming there will be one cluster for these guys then eight seven and seven eight maybe one cluster for this and one data point i have knowingly put far the reason for that is i want to see if this goes as the noise okay so now if i plot this x right if i plot this x which i am doing here you can see that there is a three points together here right two points together here and one point is very far this is nothing but the last point okay so how db skin clustering works guys is it will try to find out the density of points okay so wherever more density is there it will say that it is one cluster based on what based on those five things that i wrote here core point border point noise point epsilon and minimum sample now let me call a simple db scan clustering on top of this data okay so how i do that i just go here and say clustering is equal to db scan and db scan will necessarily take two parameters guys one is epsilon another is minimum number of samples and then i call it fit on which data on x okay once i run this guys you will see that there are how many clusters formed here clustering dot levels if i say you can see 0 1 and minus 1 three different values okay so what what the python is saying us is your first three data points fall in cluster 0 your next two data points fall in cluster 1 and your last data point is a noise so always remember this guys whenever you run db scan you will see some minus 1 levels okay the meaning of minus 1 is it is a noise noise means something which is far which is neither a border point nor a core point okay now see here two important parameters guys one is epsilon so what is epsilon epsilon is nothing but distance of closeness for example what you call as close based on euclidean distance or manhattan distance the meaning of this is if i reduce this right what will happen is the the uh, the idea of clustering will be different which means if you see here these two points will be having some distance between them okay which is less than three and hence these two are considered as a one cluster if i make it from three to nine right what will happen my number of clusters will increase or decrease my number of clusters will decrease the reason being i am saying something which is nine you know nine units away that is also close for me consider that as close for me so let's run this and see how many clusters now as you can see guys only one cluster zero okay what i have done i have increased this epsilon which means i am saying 
consider the far points also as something close that is how epsilon works guys here minimum number of samples is two what happens if i make minimum number of samples at six what happens let's see so what will happen is all the data points are considered as noise what is the reason guys the reason is in total we have six data points only right and what i'm saying here i'm saying take epsilon 9 and your definition of core point is only if you have six samples so there is a possibility that this point is more than nine units away from all these points or core point okay and i'm saying if there is not six samples inside your one cluster don't define any cluster so if don't define any cluster means all these things will be called as noise hence minus one minus one minus one okay now all these things i have taken from directly sklearn page guys i will just show you here if you can see here everything all the example definition is from sklearn page only till now now i want to show you one important thing which is different in db scan clustering interview question also as compared to k-means clustering okay now guys if you see here i have fit a clustering model here right so i should be able to predict on the new data right so clustering is nothing but my model so clustering dot if i press a tab i expect a predict function here but if you see there is no predict function guys i will tell you the reason why it is not there there is no predict function okay but if you fit a k-means model here see here i'm importing k-means k-means is equal to give me two clusters fit on the same data let me run this k-means levels how many clusters k-means is giving uh, one cluster five data points other cluster only one data point and then i can very well run a predict guys k-means dot predict and some input data it says that your both these input data falls in uh, cluster number zero now one important thing to understand here is the way k-means clustering works is different from the way density based clustering works guys in k-means clustering your centroids are fixed okay so you can say here k means k means dot you you can see the cluster centers guys okay so these are your centers tomorrow a new data point comes right it will just see these centers and see okay from which center these data points are closer now you can see here very easily that zero zero is more close to this data point or 2580 obviously this data point right that is where it is saying 0th cluster 12 and 3 which data point it is closer obviously first one that is where it says cluster number 0 if i make it something closer to 25 and 80 let me make it 24 and 81 and here let me let me make it little closer to 25 and 80 okay so 24 and 85 now i expect these two data points to be assigned to second cluster so this 00, zero should change to 11 let's see it is changing to 11 the reason for that is our cluster centroids are fixed and you can predict on the new data point but how density based clustering or db scan works is your cluster centroids are not fixed guys okay it is it is working on a different way it assumes that you will give it all the data point in one shot it will see the densities and it will tell you okay this is one cluster this is other cluster and you define what you define epsilon and you define minimum number of samples okay so one important difference in db scan clustering you cannot predict on the new data set rather if you want to create see in which cluster new data set uh, falls you need to rerun the cluster one more time okay but in k means you can predict on the new data point so this section which is part three of this video i am showing you deciding optimal value for epsilon okay if you see here i'm importing some uh, some libraries to generate some data guys and i'm importing from sklearn something known as nearest neighbors what is the use of nearest neighbor i will tell you in a moment some c1 to see some visualization so what is the use of make blobs is it will create some data points uh, using sklearn which will have a you know cluster kind of arrangement so let me run this and let me show you here if you see i am generating x and y by by calling make blobs function how many points 200 points how many centers four 
what is my cluster standard deviation 6.6 .6. so what i'm doing here guys you can think i'm just generating some data suitable for clustering that's all i'm doing okay don't bother much about this okay just generating some data to suit for a clustering algorithm you can take a data from a file also not a problem now i'm going to show you what does this nearest neighbor do guys okay so come here if you can see i have defined three data points here okay three data points here and i am calling nearest neighbor here and i am saying nearest neighbor is equal to one and fit on my samples this is just a demo of what this module does okay let me run this once i fit this nearest neighbor on this samples data then what i can do is i can give a data point as input okay so if you can see here neigh is my model i am saying dot k neighbors of this data what is my data 0 0 0.4 0 0.1 let me run this then you will understand so 0 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 is closer to which of these data points guys tell me 0 0 0.4 and 0 0.1 is closer to which of these data point second second entry right that is what it says array 1 1 means you can start the 0th index this is 0th thing this is first thing and this is second thing okay so what nearest neighbor algorithm does is it will calculate the distance from all the data points and it will tell you hey you know what the data point you have supplied to me is closer to this one and the distance is 0 0.14 okay if i change this value guys let me try printing something which is closer to 0th point okay so uh, let me make it 0 0.1 second uh, dimension make it zero third dimension keep it 0 0.1 what i'm expecting is this this observation should be closer to array zero which means first first entry in these samples okay and distance also it will give so as you can see array zero and distance also it is giving so the crux of this is the job of nearest neighbor is to tell you in your population which data point is more close to which data point and what is the distance between them now what I'm doing here guys, I take all the data points from my above created data. Okay. I'm showing you how to indirectly derive the good value of epsilon. Okay. So here I am fitting the same algorithm nearest neighbor is equal to two neighbors is equal to fit distance indices neighbors dot neighbor. So if you see this distance guys, let me run this. I will tell you what is this graph just a moment. So if you see this distance, right, it tells you that this is the distance first one this is the second one this is the third one this is the fourth one and if you see the indices right it tells you that between which two points it is calculating distance point number zero and point number 62 that was the first entry in the distance uh, distance vector uh, point number one and point number 88 the value that you saw just before the second value was the distance between these two points so what i'm trying to find out here is in which distance range in which distance range most of the distances are falling within that data okay so i take the distance i short it and i plot it i take the distance i short it and i plot it that is what i am doing here np dot short take those distances short it and plot it when i plot it guys what you are going to see here is out of 200 data points right out of 200 data points the distance the distance is mostly falling between let's say below 0 0.5 or 0 0.4 something like that right so it is raising and after this right it is we cannot go for the value of distance we cannot go at a very high level right if we go very high level then cluster will not make much sense so we need to find out a point where there is a sharp increase or where there is a most percentage of points are covering. So here you can see 0 0.4, 0 0.5 are kind of candidates for that. So let me run DB scan on this data with epsilon 0 0.3 first. Epsilon 0 0.3 sample size. We are not optimizing minimum sample, so we will keep it constant. Epsilon 0 0.3. Let's see what happens. Okay. We run. These are the cluster levels. Now I have done a set and LEN that will tell me how many individual clusters are there. So 11 clusters. Now, how do we verify goodness of our cluster using Silot score? 
what does silot score say 0.006 which means not a good cluster okay not a good clustering algorithm i mean clustering model training let us make epsilon 0.4 so what what we are saying by making 0.4 guys we are saying that consider something with is 0.4 away also as the close so number of clusters will increase or decrease it will decrease right what is the silot now 0.42 very good shift right very good shift if i make it 0.5 epsilon right number of clusters will decrease further here it is not decreasing let's see what happens to silot 55 so it is increasing so what i'm saying here is more and more of your data points are in terms of closeness right in terms of closeness below 0.5 or 0.4 then that can be your one epsilon candidate what you can do is you can run for different different things here where there is a sharp you know shift after covering some decent amount of percentage of your data right that few of those epsilon you can take run your clustering check the clustering algorithm performance and then you can decide what is your epsilon okay this exercise might be little tricky if you have multiple dimensions and if you have more number of records in your data but still very useful guys okay now i want to give you one simple assignment okay what you have to do is you have to find out a way to um, get optimal maximum sorry minimum number of sample the other parameter i mean to say okay minimum number of sample so how would you do that that take that as an exercise and comment me how did you find you know optimal number of minimum sample for your clustering data in db scan clustering okay so what all we discussed guys we discussed how to fit a simple db scan clustering what is the intuition behind epsilon and minimum number of samples how it is different from k means clustering uh, how to decide optimal number of epsilon and other parameters and some something about nearest neighbors and all these different topics right so let me know guys if you have any questions around this please subscribe to the channel if you have not done yet and share it in various groups so that we can grow as a family i'll see you all in the next video guys till then wherever you are stay safe and take care